thing I wanted to touch on in this lecture is economic growth and sustainability. Is economic growth sustainable? Well, let's take a look at a couple of theories, the first of which is classical growth theory. So classical growth theory states that the growth of real GDP per capita is temporary and that when it rises above something known as the subsistence level, a population explosion eventually brings it back to the subsistence level. Let's think about it. Real GDP increases, but then there's a huge increase in the population. Well, then all that happens is that we have a decrease in real GDP per capita because we have, let's say, the same amount of real GDP, but we have way more people. So it has to be spread out over these people and so real GDP per capita decreases. Neoclassical growth theory states that real GDP per capita grows because of technological change. Technological change induces savings and investment, and this savings and investment is what makes capital per hour of labor grow. Growth ends if technological change stops, um, perhaps due to diminishing returns from labor and capital, both. Continuing with the neoclassical growth theory, um, the key influence here that slows population growth rate is the opportunity cost of a woman's time. Because as wages increase and job opportunities expand, the opportunity cost of having children increases. And this opportunity cost results in less babies actually being born. Technological advances bring higher income. Um, they also bring in advances in healthcare and extend lives. So as income increases, the birth and death rate actually decrease and this slows down population growth. In terms of technology change and the diminishing returns, it's assumed that technological change results from chance. Luck results in rapid technological change, and bad luck results in slow technological change. Neoclassical growth theory states that prosperity resulting from new technologies will last, but the economic growth will not, unless the technology keeps advancing. Prosperity will, will persist because there's no classical population growth to induce a fall in the wage rate, so income gains per capita are permanent. Growth will eventually stop if technology stops advancing because of diminishing marginal returns of capital. High profit that results from technological change actually brings an increased investment and savings, um, investment in terms of capital accumulation. As more capital is accumulated, more and more projects are undertaken that have reduced the rates of return, and this is diminishing marginal returns. As the return on capital falls, the incentive to keep investing becomes weaker, and so savings and capital, capital accumulation decrease. New growth theory is essentially the proposition that real GDP per person grows because of the choices that people make in the pursuit of profit, and that growth will actually persist indefinitely. The pace at which new discoveries are made and at which technology advances it is not determined by change, um, chance, rather by how many people are actually looking for the new technology and how intensively they are looking. The search for new technologies is driven by incentives. Profit spurs technological change. Um, the forces of competition actually reduce profit margins. So to increase profits, companies will constantly seek either lower cost methods of producing the same goods, or they'll look for newer or better products for which people are willing to pay a higher price. Patents and copyrights are also claimed in order to maintain profits for a certain period of time. And discoveries are eventually a public capital good, and knowledge is a capital good that is not subject to diminishing returns. Knowledge not being subject to diminishing marginal returns results in the stock of knowledge increasing, and the continual increases in productivity of labor and capital. New growth theory does not actually have any sort of growth stopping mechanism, like uh, f as physical capital accumulates, the real interest rate does fall, but the incentive to innovate and earn higher profits becomes stronger. So innovation occurs, capital becomes more productive, the demand for capital increases, and the real interest rate rises again. The growth rate depends only on people's incentives and abilities to innovate. A couple of policies for achieving faster growth. The first thing that we can do is stimulate saving, because savings finance investment. So stim stimulating, will, stimulating saving will increase growth. We could also stimulate research and development, because everyone can use these fruits of basic research, all these discoveries, we can always use them. But because this can be copied, an inefficient amount of research will actually be undertaken. So the government needs to either fund this research to increase its quantity, or it can provide things like uh, intellectual property rights which will provide a profit incentive. We can also increase the quantity, sorry, quality of education. Because the free market produces too little, little education, 
because it brings in benefits to those um, beyond who are actually consuming this education, it's underprovided by the free market. So governments can fund this basic education, and this will increase human capital and thus increase potential GDP. Tax incentives can stimulate education as well. Um, this would encourage an improved private provision. The last thing that I want to um, touch on is that encouraging international trade can also achieve faster economic growth. Trade, not aid, stimulates economic growth because this extracts the available gains from specialization in trade.